there are only two industries that are really recession proof and, and healthcare is one of them. And people are going to be seeking healthcare regardless uh, of what's going on in the economy. And the reality is we just want them to choose you. And so that's a, that's a perfect setup doc for our, our episode today. With you. Hello and welcome to the Remarkable CEO Podcast, a show dedicated to chiropractors who want to transform their job into a business so that they can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. With your hosts, Dr. Pete Camiolo and Dr. Stephen Franson. Welcome back to another episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. I'm Dr. Pete Camiolo. And I'm Dr. Stephen Franson. And it is an honor to be with you here today. If you are just joining us for the first time, welcome to the Remarkable CEO Podcast. If you are a regular, hey, Good to see you. It's good to be together today. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, so we're in a, a, a mini series that we're doing. I uh, just want to give a, um, just a invitation to you. If you uh, have not already uh, heard about this or taken advantage of this, we have an event coming up uh, here September 30th and October 1st in the North America uh, region. And it's our, we call our attraction immersion. Uh, and we are, uh, we would love to have you join us there. Uh, so uh, if you are looking for more information on that, you can go to remarkablepractice.com and go to our events uh, link and you can learn more about that upcoming event. We'd love to have you join us, uh, Dr. Stephen. And don't let's not forget about our Australian event. Now that we're live again, we're in Melbourne, you know, also the Remarkable Attraction Immersion, all about marketing and lead generation, internal, external and digital lead generation for our Australasian brothers and sisters. That's going to be October 14th and 15th in Melbourne. Super psyched to be live again in Australia. Our last event was off the charts over there. So we want you to make sure you get registered uh, and come on out. We'd love to see you. Can't wait to see you. Uh, so again, uh, just uh, again, check it out on remarkablepractice.com and you can go ahead and get registered uh, for those events. We're also in the, in the midst of this two-part series. Uh, so if you missed the previous episode, I actually do encourage you to go back and listen to that maybe before you listen to this episode even, but if not, then right afterwards, uh, because what we walked through was the three stages or st steps to recession proofing your practice. Um, talked about stage one being preparing yourself, stage two, preparing your team, and then stage three being preparing your practice. So if you didn't catch that one, I encourage you to go back and listen to it. Um, and then what, what en we ended up uh, saying right at the end doc, which I loved, which is, you know, that, that, as far as in a recession, there are only two industries that are really recession proof and, and healthcare is one of them. And people are going to be seeking healthcare regardless of, of what's going on in the economy. And the reality is we just want them to choose you. And so that's a, that's a perfect setup doc for our, our episode today, which we titled the unusual opportunity ahead. And uh, we're, we're excited to dig into this because there are opportunities and maybe a little bit unusual, these may catch you off a little bit off guard, but we love that because we know that in, in seasons where there's some tumultuous times, we know that these are times of refinement. These are times to, uh, to grow. We talk about the, we all love the analogy of the diamond. The diamond is that, that precious gemstone, that stone that carries such great value. It's, it's formed under pressure. So we know that beautiful things, precious things, Things that are of great value come out of stress, out of pressure, out of the weight. Uh, it's the same of people and it's the same for your businesses. Dr. Steven, I know there's some unusual opportunities ahead and we're going to go ahead and unpack some of those today. Yeah, I'm psyched for this conversation because these four opportunities ahead, they're, they're counterintuitive. And I'll tell you what, they'll be increasingly so as we go through number one, number two, number three, number four. You know, the number four, you're like, what? <laughs> you know, so, you know, just know that as we said in the previous episode, you know, we want to make sure that we go into uh, this next season with um, an opportunistic mindset, right? So we want to be positive and we want to have the attitude of, man, let's seize the day. There's lots of opportunity to come, right? So the, the first of these, um, I'm going to pick up where we left off the last time. The first of these is all about our branding. It's all about our positioning. And what a great opportunity for us to revisit and sharpen our branding, right? So what we recognize is the purpose of a business is to solve a problem for another person, right? So in other words, 
In, in other words, there are people that are seeking a solution to a problem, a healthcare issue. And regardless of where you fall on this philosophy spectrum, you know where we are. I know we've leaned far to the right on the philosophy spectrum. We also are hardcore entrepreneurs and business people. And we know at this point, there ain't nobody in your town Googling subluxation correction yet. <laughs> right? So no, nobody's Googling um, optimal expression of my innate potential yet, right? And showing up in our office, the truth is, is 20% of your community at any given time is looking for help, right? They're struggling with their health, right? So they are seeking and searching for help with their crises and their conditions, their symptoms, what we call body signals. What a perfect opportunity for us to revisit this conversation, get this narrative back to the forefront and uh, dust it off, if you will, and make sure that you are ramping up your table side education, your workshops, and all of your marketing and brand positioning and brand um, promises Take a look at your marketing, listen to your market messaging, listen to your unique success proposition. Are you communicating to the community? It's like, listen, you all know that stress makes you sick, right? But do they know that it's the nervous system that helps a human being, a human body cope with and adapt to its stresses so that you can not only survive, but thrive despite stressful situations, right? So ultimately you want to have yourself positioned Dr. Pete in a place where your brand is where actually the experts that help you keep a clear nervous system so that you can adapt to and thrive despite the stressful environment. So as stress goes up, man, so does the need and the demand for great chiropractic care. You know, I love how you and, and you said this. Um, you've said this multiple times, and I, I think I might have heard some others talk about this as well in branding type um, trainings and and meetings. Which is that you know your brand is not what you say about yourself; it's what your community says about you. Okay, and and I want to unpack that just for a minute. So it's what your community says about you. Your community starts with your team. Okay. That's a part of your community. It's a, it's a community of people that you have uh, recruited and, and hired to come on board. What is it that they're saying about you? In other words, during these times when you sharpen your brand, make sure you're sharpening your team's communication and, and talk, whether it's at the table, at the front desk, in the reception area, in the, you know, out in the parking lot, downtown, at the grocery store. What is your team saying about you? Number two, what are your patients saying about you? Dr. Timmy, I love how you know, you, uh, you had your business card with your, uh, you know, your, your quote on the back because you know, your patients needed to be educated on what they needed to say, who is your, who is your expert that regularly checks and assesses you're going to, you're going to do the quote, but you know, who is that person in your life? You know what, what's your community saying about you? What are your patients? That's part of your community saying about you. And then the third, what is your community saying about you? is those who are your inactive patients or they've never been active patients yet or previously active patients. Um, what are those people saying about you in your community? So I think that's a really important um, you know, assessment to do. Uh, do an audit of, of what are people saying about us? Yes, go online and check out your website, check out your videos, check out your YouTube channel, check out whatever that you're putting out there, but listen to what people are saying and ask the questions uh, to your patients and to your community, what do you know about us? What do you tell people that we do? How do you how do you talk about coming to the chiropractor? What are the things that you say that you do? Like actually digging in and finding this out. This is a perfect time to sharpen your branding. And then the second thing I wanted to say, Doc, is that to ask yourself this question, does your community, including your patients, see you as the health expert? Do they see you as the health expert? Or do they just see you as a, another chiropractor or I don't know what they see you as, but do they see you as a health expert? If the answer is yes, then ramp that up. Just put a magnifying glass on that and take it to another level. If the answer is no, then you need to course correct. We need to reposition. You need to reposition yourself as the expert in your community when it comes to health. Uh, so again, asking yourself the question, if it's yes, ramp it up. If it's no, I don't think so then it's time to correct that and make sure that the answer will be yes. I heard Dr. John Demartini once say, take the reason that they say no to make it the reason that they must say yes, right? So, you know, when we say let's get ahead of this thing, when we say this is an opportunity, we have an opportunity. You should not be surprised that we've got some crazy economic times ahead of us. You just shouldn't be surprised by that, right? So the reality is, is nobody knows when 
that's going to hit that nobody knows how deep it's going to go or how long it's going to last. Right. But the reality is, is that there's going to be tumultuous times ahead, period. Okay. So let's get ready. Can you imagine like you have the perspective right now to be able to say, okay, let's put together a plan. We know this is coming. Okay. So when there is stressful economic times, guess what happens? Like you, you're going to hear people that are going to be like, um, I can't do this right now because I'm just so stressed out with the economy or I can't start care right now or I can't commit to care right now or I get to drop out of care right now like, because I'm, I'm stressed out by the economy, right? So if you can foresee some of those things happening in your community, guess what? Get in front of that. Make the reason that they would drop out the reason that they would never drop out. Right. So the idea is like if you are positioned perfectly where they understand, it's like, listen, your nervous system is the system that helps you cope with and adapt to stressors in your life. The more stress you're under, the more you need to get checked and adjusted. You more you want your nervous system functioning optimally. You do not want to be subluxated, interfering with the function of the nervous system, which is to help you cope with and adapt to stresses. So if you are, this is what we mean right now by guys, right now, today, tomorrow, start right now getting your practice ready, getting your community ready, right? Getting yourselves positioned for the solution to the problem that you, they are going to be experiencing and you are going to be hearing. Okay. So guys, this isn't like a feel good conversation. you are like, Oh, that was neat. I learned a few things. No, I am asking you to put this in action right now. Get out ahead of this thing. Some of you are smiling right now and being like, Oh, bro, I'm way ahead of you. I learned my lesson in COVID. I was, remember when you said there's only two types of chiropractic practices in the world right now? Those that have educated their patients and those that wish they had, right? So, man, that hit me right between the eyes. I've been, I've been a table talking fool. I've been doing all my workshops. I've been like passing out research, right? So, I have got my A game on. Awesome. Some of you are like, whoa, can't believe it. I actually got on the other side of COVID and I got back to bad habits. Right. So I started getting back on my laurels and I lean back a bit. It's summertime here in the US. You know, everything's been hunky dory. Nothing covers sins like cash flow. Right. So everything's been really, you know, cut quite easy relative to the previous two years. Well, I'm telling you, now is not the time to lean back. Now is the time to lean in. I want everybody to be ramping up their market position and making sure that that body signals message and the ability of the body to cope with stress is leading your narrative. So Dr. Pete, that dovetails perfectly into our second unusual suspect here on as far as opportunities that are going to be all around you. And that is in marketing. So here's what we know. Businesses panic if there's any interruption or any fluctuation in the market, right? So if things take a dip or a downturn, or there's a prediction of a downturn, one of the first things businesses do to their own folly is they pull back or stop marketing. They pull back their marketing dollars and they're like, man, I just want to pull it all back and not spend money because I like the security of knowing that, you know, I have no idea what's going to happen in the economy. So I'm going to stop marketing. I'm going to stop that marketing spend, man. It's the biggest mistake you could make. So I'm going to tell everybody right now, it's time to push your chips in and ramp up your marketing, right? So instead of doing the wrong thing, I don't even want you to stay neutral. I want you to ramp up your marketing. When you think about it, when everybody else stops marketing because they're in fear and doubt and panic, the noise quiets down and you can be loud in the marketplace if you're the one marketing. Dr. Pete, I say right now, push your chips in, lean in and ramp up your marketing. Yeah, I mean, I think you just you hit it on the head with with several of the points you're making, you know, just about really understanding the purpose of chiropractic, the value of of the the service that we provide, the product that you offer um, and really leaning into that in, into your community. You know, like you said, while others are pulling back their marketing dollars, this gives you opportunity. How many of you right now have been like, man, we've been spending more on ads and spending more on Google just to try to get you know, just a little bit more traction and move up in the rankings, get a few more leads. And it's like, well, guess what? When others pull out their dollars from, you know, those platforms and you keep pushing yours in, all of a sudden you'll see yourself go up to the top. You'll see yourself all of a sudden capturing more leads. Like we said earlier, healthcare is recession proof. People are still going to be certain people are still going to be getting sick. Actually, they're usually going to get even struggle more with their health because of the stress of the day. So they're going to be seeking and searching for help. And guess what? When they look around, the question is, are they going to find you? The answer is they, they better find you, right? So we're going to make sure that they find you. 
And that means I'm going to reinvest. I'm going to be continuing to invest more. I'm going to ramp up my marketing. So this is not the time to stop doing dinners. Listen, if you can't go into a restaurant, throw up a tent. We're doing dinners in the uh, dinners with the doctor in the park. You know, find a pavilion somewhere. Bring out some some space heaters from your team's uh, your patios and say we've got some heat. Wear a parka. Doesn't matter. We're gonna we're gonna make this happen. Like, what's the story you want to tell your kids and your grandkids? Oh yeah, my dad, my mom. You know, during the pandemic, they didn't do anything. No, they were doing dinners in the park. They were doing peace and appreciation days in the midst of the storm. Like, didn't matter why. Because you know we were committed, and I know this 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 speaks to so many of you. But you know you have you did that. You've been there, maybe in some ways done that, Doc Steam, like you said. But maybe you've gotten a little bit comfortable recently, and it's time to get not uncomfortable, but it's time to take action. It's time to ramp it up. In other words, lean in, invest. Now is that time, and make the noise of truth of hope while people are reacting and they're afraid. Be the voice of reason, of calm, of truth. Be that person. People are like, that's very different what I'm hearing everywhere else. That's right. You'll get, you'll catch people's attention. And I'll tell you, that's just massive right now. That's exactly right. So there's no mistake that the first step is to get your message right, right? So sharpen that message, sharpen your brand and be really clear about it. Get that tight and right then ramp up your marketing with that message, right? So you see that order, right? And number three, uh, this is gonna be more and more counterintuitive, which is so many businesses will make the mistake of laying off people if the economy looks uncertain, right? So especially big companies, especially publicly traded companies, right? So people who have to answer to investors and a board, right? So it's like people who have to answer to quarterly bottom line, right? So profit margins, et cetera. They start laying off all these people. Well, you know, the truth is, is that this has been one of the most challenging hiring environments for the last 12 months that we've seen in 20 years, right? So it's super hard to find A players. Some of you have actually spent the year trying to find that A player hiring, like I'm almost given up, I can't find anybody, or I've settled for B and dare I say C players in this last 12 months. So guess what's about to happen? If the economy does a wobble, the first thing that happens is these bigger companies start laying off these people. And you're going to see a whole bunch of people and a bunch of them are going to be A players that dump back into that talent pool. So this is the time to, number three, ramp up your dream team. This is the time to invest in building your dream team. Scoop those people up. All right, for some of you, it might be finally adding that dream team, that A player, or maybe it's, you know, it's time to... Uh, to tighten the bolts on your existing team. There may be some replacing of some people that you've been tolerating to this point because you just simply couldn't replace them before. So this is the time, Dr. Pete, that you want to be building that dream team as you're going to see more and more A players dump into the talent pool. And Doc, you know, one of the things that I saw and we're seeing now more than ever before is people choosing to do work, not just for more money, but actually for more purpose. You know, people are... Um, during this time, you know, you're seeing people choose to work in areas that align more with their purpose. They're not willing to um, just keep doing things just for the sake of doing it, just for the paycheck. And so this goes back to the previous two points, which is, you know, just getting that that branding and, and getting that sharpened and being crystal clear, because that's going to impact who you hire. Remember, uh, a players won't settle for working for less than an A player community, of an A player environment. So be the A player CEO, be that A level CEO so that you can, you're the, you are the business, you are the person to attract that A player that can steward and, and handle that level of talent so they don't go elsewhere and just brush past your ad or brush past your, your offer after your interview but that they feel so compelled by your brand, by your message, by the, the level of you know, tenacity and courage that you're using to ramp up your messaging and marketing into the marketplace and by how you, you continue to train your team, develop your team, pour into your team and invest in your people that they say, you know, I wanna be a part of an environment like this. I yeah. came out of a corporate environment but man, this is what I want. I've been looking for this. This is this is like family. This is what I've been looking for, where my skills, my talents can be showcased and used to make an impact that I can see. Dr. Steven, yeah, you're exactly right. This is time to build the dream team. And I'm sure that there are docs that are listening right now. What are you guys talking about? 
<laughs> it's like, aren't we supposed to like just pull back and contract and keep our powder dry and just, you know, let the storm pass? Hell no, right? Now is the time to lean in, right? So, you know, we're hiring three people right now in the Remarkable Practice. It's like we're building out our team and I have no fear. Why? Because I take a three-year view of my business, right? So always having a three-year view of the business, I'm getting our business ready to serve 10 times as many chiropractors. I'm expanding now, this is the time I'm. I've got a three-year view, Doctor Pete. I know. Ex I know exactly what our business needs to increase our capacity to serve more doctors, so we can serve more humans, right? So, what the wobble in the economy does in the next few weeks, months, or what have you, it's just like that's not deterring me from building the team that I need to serve humanity through our clients, right? So, it's a purpose-driven thing, right? And secondly. You know, I we're doing, we practice what we preach, we preach what we're practicing, right? So we have scorecards and KPIs, all of those are tied to revenue. I'm not worried about, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about getting upside down there on that. So, you know, at the end of the day, we have, we have such great reporting systems and meeting rhythms with accountability and visibility in our business that I don't have stress and strain about that, right? So ultimately, if you are following the system, you can expand your dream team without fear, but rather with just this great sense of like expansion and abundance and opportunity that certainly lays ahead in these next several months. So Dr. Pete, this brings us to number four, which is probably the least intuitive, right? So the most counterintuitive out of these four ways to seize the opportunities, carpe diem, that one goes out to my dad, right? Carpe diem in these uh, turbulent times. And number four is while most businesses will panic, and they'll start cutting their prices to try to maintain some level of market share and not contract and shrink, right? Doing sales and you know just chopping their prices and what have you. It's called a race to the bottom. I'm gonna tell you right now, the most successful businesses in a three-year view will be those that raise their prices. Listen, these are inflationary times. All prices are up, right? You should be raising your prices. Everybody is paying more for everything. Are they paying more for your services of love? Let me ask you that question. Uh, have you ramped your costs, right? So have your expenses gone up, right? So you should be increasing the prices of your care because everything is going up, right? So all prices are going up. Do not participate in that panicked on the other side of inflation. If there is a recession, there's that race to the bottom where everybody starts slashing prices. And you know, at the end of the day, 2008, 2009, 2010 taught, if they taught us anything, those that did the race to the bottom got commoditized and they could never recover from that. Whereas those recognize, you know what? It's a 20, 60, 20 rule. 20% 20 of people are gonna leave anyway, no matter what we do with our prices. The other 20% on the other end of the spectrum, we couldn't charge too much. They'd always stay. It's the 60% in the middle we have to keep an eye on and be like, let's find where the price tolerance is for that 60% in the middle, right? And ramp that up during these trying times and watch what happens on the rebound. Just like all those businesses in 2008, 2009, 2010, those that had ramped their prices um, when, the, when the economy came bouncing back, they were 10Xing their top line revenue and profit. Ah, this is such a powerful... Uh conversation and I hope and I know that so many of you who are listening are uh, are just getting tremendous value out of this. I know this was a convicting conversation and we uh, we hit some unusual things and some usual opportunities that you have ahead. So uh, just as a recap, remember, during trying times, Dr. Stephen, like you just shared, there are strategies that need to be deployed during these times. And we've identified four unusual opportunities that you have right now. And our encouragement is that you take action today. Number one is sharpen your branding. This is the perfect opportunity for you and time to position yourself properly in the marketplace. Number two, ramp up your marketing. While others are going to be pulling back, it's time to jump in. It's time to make noise, the noise of truth, hope, and, and health and healing during this time for people react and are, are acting out of fear. Number three, build that dream team. Now is the time to collect those A players to raise the level of play on your team so you can make a bigger impact, you can make a bigger income, you can achieve your vision. And number four, it's time to increase the prices. The price has gone up. You already know that your services are priceless, that it's, it's hard to quantify the value of what you offer to transform and save someone's life, but make sure it meets the need. Pay attention to that group 60, that 60% 60 in the middle. Make sure you get those prices right. Let's make sure we increase those prices. Those are our four action steps for you. 
Uh, we'll pick this conversation up in a week. I pray that all of you have a remarkable rest of this week. And again, if you haven't registered for the upcoming immersions coming up in Australia and here in the US, the attraction immersions, uh, make sure you go to theremarkablepractice.com to learn more. And I hope to see you there. Until next week, God bless everyone. Please stick around for more business insights from this week's bonus interview with our Remarkable Success partner, dedicated to helping you more successfully help more people. Enjoy. All right, Remarkable CEO. So as promised, I'm here today in the studio with a colleague of mine and all of ours, a Remarkable Chiropractor, CEO, and business owner, one of our Remarkable Success partners here. And... Uh, Dr. Stephen Kirby with uh, Chiro Launch. Super pumped to have you in the studio with me today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, and it's it's a pleasure. And thank you so much for inviting me on. It's um, yeah, it's coming all the way from the other <laughs> coming all the way from the other side of the world. Uh, we we got a little mix up on our recording time. It's a little early for you, but here I am in the states, and there you are in Australia, and it's bright and early for you. So thanks for getting up a little extra early to jump in the studio and record with me and. I know our podcast listeners are going to uh, gain a ton of value from you. So again, thank you for the commitment to even getting up early to do this today. Uh, it's all good. I'm in the future. So we should be able to tell you guys a little bit more about what's happening. <laughs> Amazing. That, that sounds like what a, what a good marketer needs to be able to do. It needs to be a little bit ahead of the rest of us, right? So uh, <laughs> we're, we're going to have, we're going to have a conversation about marketing, right? This ever never goes away. Always a hot topic, always a, a, a point of con a contention, always oh, totally. a conversation yeah. that we need to have. So you've been in this. Uh, let, well, actually, you know what? Before we get into that, let's tell us a little about you. I'd love to hear about uh, who you are, where you're at, and maybe a little bit of the Genesis story of, of how this even began for you launching uh, Cairo Launch. I'd love to hear that. Yeah, so it's kind of like how I got into chiropractic. It, it happened incidentally. It's Everyone's got a story, I guess, but um, I used to compete in powerlifting and um, I had no idea really what I was what I was going to do. I was studying um, like law topics at university and um, criminology and things like that. And I, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't want to be a, either a police officer, an enforcer um, or be a lawyer, really. Like I, I sort of saw that that wasn't something that I, I really, um, you know, was on purpose for me. So I was, um, I was competing in powerlifting, deadlifting one day, just warming up and, and heard this into my back and um, couldn't walk, couldn't, uh, I had a, a car with, that was manual at the time. I couldn't really drive that properly, but I managed to get home. And I remember myself break dancing, you know, to try and get out of the, the bed. Um, and one of my friends who was training with me, his uncle was a really well-known chiropractor. I had no idea. And um, at the time I was like, oh, chiropractic. Oh, I've heard some, some, you know, weird stuff about chiropractic. Mm -hmm. well, I'll give it a go though. You know, being a West Side kind of powerlifter, it's not like I really cared what people said, you know, like <laughs> we're pretty extreme in what we used to do. So I went along to the chiropractor and after the first adjustment, I was like, what the was that? Because I'd been to physiotherapists, I'd had, you know, medications, I'd done all the stuff that the doctors and the medicos had told me to do. And it did nothing. And one adjustment made me feel completely different. It was ridiculous. I was like, nah. So I enrolled into chiropractic college, <laughs> um, you know, right away. So that was my story of how I got into chiropractic. And you know, he was a doc who was quite high volume. He was seeing like 200 people a day, um, which was pr pretty high volume at the time. And so when I went to the university, uh, I quickly realized that one, that wasn't the norm. <laughs> I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, and that most of these people had done it because it was kind of like what their parents said they should do <laughs> instead of them actually, you know, getting into chiropractic because they really wanted to be a chiropractor. Um, yeah, so when I got into practice, you know, all those years down down the track, um, you know, after having a background in marketing, my dad actually went to Stanford for a bit and studied marketing over in the States. Um, and he was head of pharmaceutical companies, believe it or not. So it was completely their field um, for me to get into to chiropractic or to have those conversations uh, with him. Uh, and, uh, you know, so coming from that sales and, and marketing background, I got into chiropractic, started my practice and I was like, where's the marketing? Like everyone was poo-pooing, doing things that I knew would work in other businesses, or they had these warped ideas, especially around how to attract people. And, you know, you just got to open your doors and people will come, 
you know, it's like, what? <laughs> and it's, uh, and so I was like, yeah, cool. Like all those ideas are great. Are they working for you? No. So why are you doing that? Or why would I be doing that? And so very quickly, I started to see some of these holes, especially in Australia. And, and maybe it was just a mindset thing towards marketing. Um, and I started doing stuff for myself and, um, and, and started getting really good traction with, you know, doing things on Google, doing things on Facebook and I uh, was sharing it with some of my friends and they were like, wow, that's pretty cool. Like, can you help me out? And so the first client was a friend in Alberta, um, <laughs> in Edmonton, Alberta. And, uh, and I just helped him out. And then he said, dude, you, you've got to start doing this for people. Like, this is not common. This is not something that's out there. And that's where we started doing it. And that was in 2017. Mm. I love it, man. I love, uh, I love the dynamic too. Like you came from more of the, the medical pharmaceutical <laughs> side, but that you have marketing in your DNA. Like it, you know, your dad studied that. That's pretty cool. I, that's, I did not know that. Learn, I'm learned, I learned quite a few things about you today, including the powerlifting background. Um, that's pretty awesome. And I'm sure that, you know, all of that is, is just really influential. And in, even to this day, how you influence people and, and help, you know, a lot of your patients get, get, get the big idea and understand chiropractic. So let's talk about, um, so 2017, you launched the business, um, you get your first take on your first client and then you start rocking there. So that's, you know, five, six years ago now. Um, so walk us through, um, you know, so you were solving a problem for yourself. Really? Basically. Yeah. yeah. I was solving a problem for myself. I knew that the problem was, was out there because I'd spoken to other coaches that I'd worked with um, and I knew that that problem was out there. And so my real focus was really geared towards, you know, because of my story and what I went through and also like the amount of pushback that was from the medical fraternity and people that were dad's friends and, you know, what have you, and having these kind of discussions that, you know, around, you know, chiro for the validity of chiropractic. I really wanted to make chiropractic mainstream. That was my purpose. And I was like, you know what? Stuff this, like I want to go hard, you know? And, um, and so that's, that's the premise that I came from. And so you got to understand like, so Westside powerlifting compared to normal powerlifting is quite extreme. So our numbers are huge because we do whatever it takes to get the result. And at the end of the day, it's you in the bar and there's no BS. It's not like bodybuilding. You get in front of three people, you dance around and then it's like up to the judges. And, you know, and it's like, there's a bit of contention there. It's like you either squat or bench that stuff or that's it. Like that's, that's, and so that's how I attack the marketing side of things as well. So when you're looking at, you know, your practice, cool, but the numbers don't lie. Like you can say all this other stuff and, but I like doing this and, but I like doing that and get kind of, um, you know, emotional about it. But the reality is the stats and the numbers don't lie. And so when you attach a, a, a solid process to something, and you and you have and it's data driven and it's results driven it's very different and it appears very different so results based kind of marketing is is completely different to creating some videos that look nice that kind of get people you know watching you there's a difference between doing that and actually getting bumped on seats and so that's been my burning desire is to get chiropractic out there as much as possible to get people to have a taste you know i want to chase around everyone in the supermarket and hey say hey, taste this because i know they taste it it's on you know good man i, I love it you, you already got my brain spinning in so many directions in a good way this is a ceo podcast we always talk about numbers we talk about systems and processes for everything and you said numbers don't lie we always say one number is a fact two numbers is the story and i think about you know with marketing and you know just the ever the how fast things have changed right just even just walking through a pandemic over the last couple of years where everybody went from, you know, doing internal marketing and external marketing and maybe some digital marketing to like, you better be doing some marketing on digital or else, you know, you're in trouble. So here we are now kind of the world is open back up for the most part. Um, and digital marketing hasn't gone anywhere. Uh, if anything, it's only become even more significant, more important. Um, so I love, I love to just unpack that a little bit more. Like, you talked about vanity, like almost like vanity marketing, vanity kind of like, Hey, my video and all that, but it's like, it matters on how many people are showing up to your office. How many people are starting care? Can you talk about that? Can you talk about, um, so, so obviously the problem that we're solving is you personally have a conviction that 
you want chiropractic mainstream. You believe that, you know, everybody should have a taste of chiropractic. And once they have a taste, that's going to change, that'll change our par paradigm. So I, I agree with that hundred percent. I love your vision and your heart there. Talk about how you're helping doctors do that then. So we say, you know, every business exists to solve a problem for someone else. So the problem that you're solving for the doctors is what, and, and how are you helping them specifically reach more people? Well, there's, there's, there's two factors. When we come into a practice, the majority of docs are trying to do a whole lot of stuff, right? And so I, I, I sort of explained to them, it's like, it's like being in a room with a whole lot of paper that's buzzing around. You need to focus on one thing, grab it, put it down, and then start, you know, start reorganizing things. And so one of the things that we like to do is come in, control that area of marketing and that department, especially digital marketing, and allow it to get a result. And so we keep some data away from people as a mechanism because we don't want them to have too much confusion and be worried about all the little shit and go, oh, what, what's my CPL? And what's, <laughs> it's like, oh, when did you study marketing? Cool, relax. It's okay, let us take care of it. And so what we focus on is getting as many new patients into the door that are, are qualified to our process. And so what I mean by that is that it's all good running ads and getting people who are interested, but then how do we take them from there to actually showing up into the practice? And that's basically our, our, unique, uh, our uniqueness in that we help the doc to train what's called an appointment setter. So that would be someone who may be a CA for now or could even be the doc if they're a real solo doc. Um, and eventually it becomes its own, um, its, own its own job, you know, basically its own role where they're doing follow-up of, of new leads, old leads, um, inactive patients, and really making sure that there's as many new people as they really require. Because there's only two ways to grow a business. It's to increase the amount of new people coming in and then to increase the amount of spend that they're spending when they come in. And that sounds a bit icky for a chiropractor, but basically what that means is if they're, if they're spending more, they're seeing us more, which means that they're getting a better result. Because you don't want to buy a computer to use the calculator function is the, is the kind of saying, right? You need to come in often enough to reprogram the nervous system to get anywhere. And it's, it's like anything, a training, whether you're in a new job, whatever it is, it's repetitive drilling or repetitive, um, you know, basically rhythm that enables a result, right? Good. And so it's the same with what we do in marketing. It's like repetitive, you know, basically repetitive hits to as many people in your area to build that awareness in that subconscious. Cool, I, I didn't see the billboard for two years, but I just saw it now because I got that, that you know, issue in my neck. And it's like, it's been a few years. <laughs> you have seen it subconsciously and it's the same with what we do in marketing. And so one of the things that happens is one organic people um, start coming in off the internet because they've seen you on, on Facebook or whatever it is we're advertising on. And then obviously, you know, there's more flow from, from the ads that we're doing. You so, know. I love so, it. Yeah. I, th I, th I think, I think you're, um, you know, we talk about this idea of the omnipresence and, you know, repetition, like you got to be in front of someone. Um, they got to hear a message, you know, before they buy or take that next step. And, and I hear all these different numbers of the numbers of times they need to have exposure and it's the numbers keep going up, right? Like how much more exposure they need to have. But I think what you hit on right there was you need to be in front of them at, at the right time when they feel like you're speaking to them and they're ready to hear you and listen, which is typically when they have an issue, right? They're, they have a concern, they have a challenge, they're in pain or something is wrong. Um, so for example, in your case, obviously you were directly referred to a chiropractor by a buddy of yours who you lifted with, but let's say you didn't and you were at home that same day dancing around, getting up out of bed and you go online, you're like, man, I got to find something. Today's day and age, if you didn't have that buddy, your hope is that, the chiropractor you ended up seeing or one like him uh you see something in your feed that day and it's like man you know what i've never been a chiropractor i'm not sure about chiropractic but i need to get this checked out right like your your hope is that that's what happens for the patient right and that's what happens like that's what we see and the clear difference is like the, the docs that create you know creative that grabs attention you know kind of like Kind of like this stuff here, right? Like uh, you've got to right. grab people's attention and you've got to get them in the door. Oh, but I don't like how that looks and no one cares you know, like about your feelings. Oh, I don't like doing adjusting videos because of how that appears. It doesn't matter. That's why there's 2 million hits. People watch that stuff. You need to get to where they are, you know? And so you need to get to their level and be, you know, where they're at because you've got to serve your market, not serve yourself. 
Yes. Right. So that's the confusion a lot of a lot of the time. So when we're following up people, it's it's kind of it's the same deal. We want the the best best possible customer experience, right? And so when we get on the phone, what we're doing is we're creating empathetic connection from the beginning. We want to get from them what their drivers are really. Like, how's this affecting your world? And I can talk to them like that. Like talk to them how you would talk to your friend. Yep. Build that connection. Repeat back to them what their issues are. Say, look, I really think that, you know, it's going through one of these processes is going to be able to help. Let's see if we can get you some help. And then getting them booked and paid to filter out the terrorists that I call, right? So there's, there's always an element of, of terrorists, you know, five to 10% of people, it doesn't matter what you do, but you'd rather find out now before they even come into the office, right, of, of their intentions. Yeah. So I think that it's so important. Um, and that's been one of the biggest successful actions that Good. we help with practices. So you, you mentioned this earlier when you talked about uh, training up an appointment center, like you guys have helped solve one of the issues of getting people booked in. Cause what really matters is that people are, are showing up for those appointments. And that made me think about this concept of return on investment, right? Anytime we make an investment or business, you know, where we are leveraging marketing, digital marketing, and the goal is to produce an outcome and the outcome is generating more new patients into your practice. So can you talk a little bit about ROI? Like, I know you have these conversations with Kairos all the time, you know, about what, what can they expect? You just, you just alluded to, you know, oh, don't be asking about CPL right now. And it's like, but, but ROI is something that as a business owner, I want to know. And I'm sure, you know, you as a business owner, you, you, you think about these things. So we think about, you know, return on investment in terms of time, energy, yeah. focus and money. So I, I want you to kind of maybe speak to those, all four of those drivers, because those are the four limited resources every business owner that's listening to this podcast has. Well, I think a lot of the time people focus on the numbers of, of return on investment being money. And yep. we did do a stat last year where we went through all of, all of the um, different clients from all the different calls that we've had, which are our ROI calls and catch up calls. And it was like one, one, one to 15 times. So whatever you put in, you get 15 times back basically, which is ridiculous. So cool. That's what it is. As far as numbers go, we have some people though that are literally with us because they don't want to do screenings. Um, it means that they can go away for their two week holiday and come back and know there's going to be new patients. And, um, and so it's, it's mainly a lot of the time, what I hear from people is, the time return. So not having to worry about where the new patient's coming from and having to do these other things that they potentially don't want to have to do all the time. Um, and then the, the stress factor, you know, like being able to go away and then come back and still have, you know, a, a whole lot of new people being able to start a new practice. I mean, that's what we call launch. A lot of launches, uh, you know, a lot of things that we do are launching, whether it's an existing practice or whether it's a new practice, um, we reverse engineer that, that process. So, you know, that say, if you want to start a new practice, we would start marketing from two or three, you know, weeks before, make sure that you have 20, 30, 40, or 50 new patients, whatever you need for that new, for that first week to then book the reports in that week. And so you're banking, you know, from the first month. So it's important to be in that condition. You know, it's important to be in the condition of, of like not needing every single patient because that's where you hire the wrong patient, right? You hire the wrong patients and then it's, that can cause you more drama. This is one person who's like spoiled the orange juice. He's got the, the rotten orange in the orange juice and it spoils yep. everything and it's like it disrupts all the flow, right? So 100%, you know, we, we talk about, we teach a concept, spend the money you're going to lose. And we talk about investing, reinvesting in your marketing and reinvesting in your team. Obviously, you know, hiring, you know, investing in your team is we've found to be the highest ROI thing you can do. And the second is reinvesting in your business in marketing. Um, and it goes to the point that you just said, you know, there's only two ways to, to generate more money, you know? And, and so can you talk about how doctors can uh, get in contact with you specifically, you know, who you're working with, who, what you're looking to do to help docs and specifically how they can get in contact with you? I'd love, love to hear that. Yeah, so who we're working with, I mean, obviously, if people are part of TRP, you know, great, um, whether they are or not, it's, it, um, it doesn't really matter. We work with, um, you know, docs who are really on purpose, um, who, who really want to grow and that fit, 
you know, our, um, our values and our culture as well. Like we are very protective of who we want in, in our groups as well. And so um, we just want cool people. So if you're a cool car, like cool. <laughs> um, and so if you want to reach out to us and even have a chat, like if we have a chat, it's not bring your credit card and let's just book some payments. It's like, we want to get to know you first. So we'll just have a quick chat, see whether or not, um, you know, we think that, that things are going to work. We guarantee everything we do, you know, there's money back guarantees and everything. And that's why we work out our ROIs is to basically then create our offers to sort of guarantee stuff. We know based on our averages from the past, if that makes sense. Um, so really simple to, to reach out. You can reach out to me on Facebook, um, uh, you know, Messenger. So just Stephen Kirby, you'll, you'll see me, the picture of my uh, wife and kid and child, one of them, got three. <laughs> um, and uh, or you can reach me on DR, so Dr. Stephen Kirby at, uh, at gmail.com is my personal email. Um, you know, and uh, my my uh, my mobile number as well. I'm I'm happy to give that out. It, I'm easy, I'm an open book. You know, so it's um, plus six one four zero seven zero eight two three eight five. So beautiful, awesome. Well, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to meet with me here today, and thank you for being a part of this podcast. I know that on this podcast we are continually looking for points of leverage where we can. Um, reinvest in our business and reach more people and have a bigger impact, make a bigger income, but not all of it depending on us and leveraging um, and, and using leverage with a, someone like yourself, Dr. Steven with Cairo Launch is an incredible way for us to do it. And we know that because you're a TRP success partner and we know that you are producing results uh, for docs that we, we personally know um, you're doing that for. So thanks for joining me and uh, for all of our amazing listeners. Uh, thanks for being a part of this program. I look forward to reconnecting with you all next week. Until then, take care, everybody. My pleasure. See you guys. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. Remember, what the world needs now is chiropractic. And what chiropractic needs now is more successful chiropractors. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, share with a friend, and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with us personally, direct message us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Now go and be remarkable.